Hello, hello, I'm Joe, and welcome to the video. So this video is going to be slightly different from what I usually do. If you've watched like any of my videos before, you know that normally my videos are about me filling a sketchbook spread and like that's the main focus of the video. But today I'm trying something new because the sketchbook spread is not going to be the focus of the video. For those of you who don't know, the other day I posted a community post asking for y'all's input on the question, is there ever a right or correct way to make art? And, uh, y'all answered. <laughs> like, a lot of y'all answered. So I'm going to be going over a handful of responses because, I don't know, this is just fun to me. As of recording this intro, I've already written the script for the voiceover part and it's like four pages long at this point. Maybe that's normal, but I've never written a script before, so I wouldn't know. To be honest, I'm not sure what like I'm gonna be doing in my sketchbook while the voiceover part plays. It'll probably just be me doing figure studies, but recently I've been trying to come up with like a better design for my persona. So I don't know, maybe it'll be me exploring that stuff, but who knows, uh, we'll see in a minute, I guess. I'll just go ahead and flip to the page I'm working on. I'm just gonna start working on my sketchbook and y'all will get to hear my dumb self ramble as if I even know what art philosophy is. Of course, right when I start recording audio, it starts thundering, so excuse that. So y'all know I use Pinterest quite a lot. And so the other day I was just kind of scrolling on my home feed whenever I found a reference photo post. It was a reference photo for other artists to use, of course, except like it wasn't an actual photo. It was a pose drawn by someone else. Y'all know those kinds of things. And the anatomy wasn't perfect, and there probably were a few things that could have been made slightly better, but it looked good. I thought it looked good. And so I went to the comments, and I saw that the top comment was a critique of the piece, and it had like 40 replies, and all of them were just so nasty. The top response was something along the lines of, as if you could do any better, hon. Uh, and the rest of it was just people, you know, getting on their butt for giving unsolicited critique. And I do want to put this out there. I think that unsolicited critique most of the time is extremely annoying. But in this case, I was kind of in support of the commenter just because people were being so ugly. So I responded to one of the replies saying something like, hey, to be fair, this person is right. If you don't want to listen to their advice, then just don't. But after that, I kind of thought, why support the person giving the critique? And then I thought about it a little bit more, and I was like, what do I, you know, what do I gain from this? Unsolicited critique is a whole other conversation on its own. I feel like I could do my own video about that. But it kind of made me spiral until I was at the point where I was like, what is art? Is there even a correct way to do it? I used to be an active TikTok user. I'm not gonna insult it like I usually do. But I do think it's a fact that people on there treat younger artists pretty harshly. You know, you make one anatomy mistake and all of a sudden people lose their minds. But why does that matter? Why do people care? <laughs> I, I literally have it written down like three times on my script. Why do people care? Just on the online artscape as a whole, as much as there are wonderful artists who genuinely want to support and lift each other up, there are also a lot of nasty people, artists or not, who could give less than a crap about who you are as a person. They might see one flaw in your art and want to see you fail. But why can we see flaws in art? How can we see flaws in it? Art is such an ambiguous thing when you really think about it. It's kind of confusing. So that was kind of the basis of what I was thinking about, and I wanted to dive a bit deeper with this video by looking at the question mentioned in the beginning. Do y'all ever think there is a correct or right way to make art? Now, before I go into specific topics, my answer is no. I don't think there is any correct way to make art. Now, I think there are certain goals and rules you can have for yourself to set up a structure of how you create and like what you want to create. However, imposing the rules you have for yourself on every other artist is silly, which is why unsolicited critique is so annoying, but that's neither here nor there. 
So, as I already mentioned before, I posted a community post asking y'all's opinions and thoughts about this because I really wanted to open a conversation about this sort of stuff. And for the most part, people were saying pretty much the same thing that I thought. Art is what you make it, there's no right or wrong way to do it. It's a form of human expression, of emotion, and to apply rigid rules to it is just silly. But there were a few responses that I got that really stood out to me. And I kind of want to add on to what those responses say and give my opinion about them because they made me think about the question in an entirely different light. The first response I got was from at Tiani Doodles, and it has to do with outside interpretation of art, aka social media and inferiority. I personally feel like there isn't a wrong way to make art. It's a form of self-expression, right? So it's different for everyone. You don't have to follow the art rules in order to create something you're proud of. I used to get comments like these all the time in school. Just because my art style isn't hyper-realistic or has some deep meaning behind it doesn't mean it's not real art. It's real art because it exists now. It's just different from how you interpret the right or wrong way to create. At the end of the day, art in all forms is how we express ourselves, so don't ever let anyone tell you you're doing it wrong. Okay. I will say, from experience, the hyper-realistic and deep meaning statement really got to me. That sort of expectation was all I could think about whenever I was working on my AP portfolio last year. I'd go online to look for examples and inspiration, and I'd see such creative and intricately crafted works of art, only to look at mine and feel so inferior. I can't draw or paint hyper-realistically, I don't like putting deep meaning into individual pieces of work. In fact, it's super rare to see a completed piece of work from me anyways. And social media definitely adds on to that pressure. No matter how good you are at art, someone will always be better than you. If I'm going to be completely honest, as someone who grew up as one of the only art kids in my schools and social groups and stuff, adjusting to that online was a little difficult for me. And I've heard people say that art school makes them feel that way too, but we're, we're getting kind of off topic here. It is weird that sometimes artists feel like there's some sort of unspoken expectation around them. And I have a theory. I think it might be the pursuit of improvement. I feel like there's always some sort of trend of people showing how much they've grown in their skills, whether that be over the past year or past few months. And I think that's wonderful, and it should be celebrated. But I think it also kind of perpetuates the idea that you constantly have to search for improvement in art to make it worthy of something, which just isn't true. The truth is, there's no definite end goal in art. If you want to learn how to paint hyper-realistically and learn every single thing about anatomy, that's great, that sort of stuff interests me too. But I also know there's going to be some people watching this video who don't really care about those things. And that's completely valid too. I love the statement, it's real art because it exists now. I feel like that's a really good way to sum up this entire point. It's, it's so well said. The next response I got was from at Luis Bilbo. Uh, and it was about AI art, which I honestly hadn't even thought about being a part of this conversation until I saw this comment. So they said, Generally, I think no, but recently the trend of people using AI-generated pieces and passing it off as their art has created more of an argument of what is art and what isn't. Personally, I think that AI-generated pieces shouldn't be considered art, or at least the people who put in the prompts shouldn't pass it off as their own art. But I suppose it is a complex subject that's mostly up to interpretation. I agree with this comment. I do think whether or not AI art should be considered art in the first place is an ambiguous subject. Here's my interpretation of AI art. It sucks. I hate it. I can't stand it. I, I really don't think it's art. Recently, me and my parents started watching Marvel's Secret Invasion because, you know, watching Marvel stuff is kind of a family thing for us. But I immediately lost interest in it once I saw the visuals for the intro were AI generated. I'm not gonna show any of it because I don't want to risk the copyright hammer slamming down on my video, but it kind of broke my heart. From its conception, I've never liked the idea of AI art, even if I can admire the impressive technical work that goes into getting AI to even work. I, I do want to admit, I think AI art on its own is a cool concept. Letting the common people have access to creating breathtaking, beautiful artwork with little effort and little money is cool. In concept, 
The issue is, the common people do have access to art. There are thousands upon thousands of real artists online, in real life, who would be more than happy to provide artwork to people who really want it. The only difference is that they need to be paid. And of course, it all comes down to money. That's why the new Marvel show has an AI-generated intro. Why spend money on an actual artist who will be more expensive and take longer to make this intro when we can just type funny words into an algorithm and boom, it's right here in our hands. Also, Marvel sucks nowadays anyways, but that's a whole different conversation for another day. So I'm going to answer this question. Is AI art a valid way to make art and claim it as your own? Is it a correct way to make art? In my opinion, no, absolutely not. This is probably the only wrong way to make art. Personally, I think art is an expression of the human experience, no matter what kind of art you make or how you make it. Giving the task of expressing human emotion to a machine just feels kind of wrong to me. And on top of that, there's also the point that AI art quite literally steals from other artists. For those who don't know, AI art generators are only made possible because of the works of other artists. The AI generator in question has a library of artwork to pick and choose from, and come up with a result based on keywords and patterns that it detects from piece to piece. It's a messed up sort of collage, I guess. I could go on and on about my distaste for AI art, but I'm gonna end this segment right here. TLDR, I don't think AI art is real art. I would consider it the only wrong way to make art. The last response that I'll be going over in depth is from at Jack the Ripper 9992, uh, and it's about capitalism. <laughs> they said, there's no right way to make art. However, in our capitalist society, where art is reduced to a simple product, the end goal of your artwork becomes profiting off of it. Therefore, there is a right way of making art, and that way is maximizing profits, which leads to adhering to trends and trying to appeal to the largest audience. Failing to do so will result in not having enough money for basic needs, which leads to, well, death. This is so, so well put. I don't feel like I'm educated enough in economics to really have a full opinion on this sort of stuff. However, I have seen the ways in which capitalism fails the majority of any given population, and the art world definitely fits into this. Even with my small time here on YouTube, I've felt this. All my videos are monetized, so I make money off of YouTube, and as of right now, it is my only source of income. I just finished high school, and I still live with my parents, so I don't have to worry about rent or anything, but still. So sometimes the videos I make are influenced by trends. Uh, an example are my two Spider-Verse videos. Did I make them because I absolutely love the Spider-Verse movies and adore them in every single way and wanted to make videos about them because I love them so much? Yes. Did I also make those videos because I thought they would perform better than usual? Also yes. In this case, playing it safe didn't really cost me any of my creative freedom, since I just wanted to make fan art anyways. But I knew Spider-Verse was a trending topic, and though my art skills aren't the best, I knew I had a solid chance at getting a few extra views anyways. Some artists, however, have to sacrifice their own creativity and goals in pursuit of financial stability. I can't think of a specific example of this happening, but I'm sure any artist who posts online can testify that they've felt at least a little bit of a push towards conformity in pursuit of success. And though I'm making the claim that trends and conformity are what keeps individual people stable, there is actually a current counter-argument to this happening with the film industry. Movies like The Flash, Indiana Jones, and Elemental have flopped pretty badly at the box office. Which is surprising, because The Flash and Indiana Jones are pretty well-known characters, and Elemental comes from Pixar itself, probably the most critically acclaimed animation company in history. Of course, since COVID happened, movie theaters have been having a rough time in general, but movies like Spider-Verse have proven that people are still willing to go to the theater. I think people are just tired of seeing the same franchises recycled and used over and over and over again. Movies have to be somewhat of a spectacle to get money, and these three films don't seem to be anything special. Okay, so I've looked at two arguments so far. One, conformity and trends dictate a person's artistic success. Being original is a risk, therefore it's safer to go with what people expect and like. But, two, I've also shown an example where familiarity and conformity doesn't guarantee success. These are conflicting viewpoints, yet there's still one common thread between them. That is, when you pursue any sort of art in a capitalist society, money dictates what art is created. 
exactly what the original comment said. If you make money, that's how you know you're making art quote-unquote correctly. But I'd have to disagree. In pursuing an art career, most artists do have to change their art itself in some ways. But not everyone creates for money. After all this, I want to end the video with this comment by at Ollivander? I think that's how you pronounce it, I don't know. <laughs> at the end of spring, I was posed a question that I had to answer formally before graduating. Sort of a final challenge of high school. The question was, is art good? To abbreviate my answer, art is good because it enriches the human experience. Your art is done the right way because it is enriching your human experience. I want to get this quote tattooed on me. It's so good. Your art is done the right way because it is enriching your human experience. And if there's anything I want y'all to take away from this video, it's that very last statement. I feel like too often as artists, we get caught up in our own insecurity. Whether that be in our own skills, lack of attention our art might be getting, or jealousy towards other artists who we see as better than ourselves. But ultimately, competition and malice towards ourselves and others is extremely counterproductive. Social media makes it so easy to make art a numbers game. It makes it so easy for us to feel inferior. But no matter your skill or your age or anything really, art is for you. There's no right way to do it. There's no wrong way to approach it. The only thing you can get wrong is being too scared to try. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Don't fear art, just do it. Do whatever you want, go start that painting. Go finish that art fight attack, because I know you need to. Yeah, July's halfway over, you're running out of time. But also, don't burn yourself out. That's an actual problem I've dealt with, and, and it sucks. It really sucks. Uh, take care of yourself, take care of your art. I wish you luck, whoever you are. Also, kind of random, before I completely stop talking about this, y'all really went all out with the responses to the community post. Uh, there were so many comments I wanted to go over, but it would just have been too much for me. Here's a few more of my favorites that I didn't talk about because, I, I don't know, it was just taking me a while to write the script, and, uh, but yeah, I felt like they needed some recognition anyways. Anyways, I've been writing the script for way too long, and now I've been recording this audio for way too long. <laughs> And I think I've said all the things I want to say, so I'm gonna end this long ramble right here. Uh, I'll talk about a few more things in a second, but for now, yeah, I'll, I'll see y'all. Okay, so actually, never mind, I have one more thing to say. I know I said I wasn't gonna talk about my art at all in the commentary, but... Y'all, I love this piece so much, I have to say something about it. So, y'all might be familiar with my characters, and some of y'all might already know who this is, but if you don't, uh, this is my original character, Cromwell, except it's not him, like in the current timeline of the story, this is like a younger version of him. Tiny Cromwell, I guess. And I actually had no plans going into the sketch for this piece. Like, I knew I kind of just wanted to do something fun and whimsical, like, I knew those were the vibes I was going for, but I had no clue what it was actually going to look like. And so whenever I did the original sketch and I just got, like, the little composition on the page, I was like, hmm, I kind of want to make this about Cromwell. And so I drew Cromwell, and then I drew a bunch of moths. And, like, I don't know why I drew moths, because, like, I don't associate those with Cromwell at all, but I think they look nice. <laughs> this is also my first time using watercolor on my channel. And as you can see, I don't layer watercolors a lot. In fact, I mean, it's probably pretty obvious, but <laughs> I get pretty scared whenever it comes to coloring my pieces. Because whenever I love the sketch and whenever I love the line art, which I loved both the sketch and the line art of this piece, I like chicken out with the coloring and I end up just not going <laughs> as like hard as I probably could. That's not to say I think that the coloring on this looks bad. I think the simplicity of it really fits with it. I don't know why I'm criticizing this piece. I think it looks good. The only thing I really don't like is the hand because what is even going on with those hands? I meant for it to look like he was like holding his hands, but it obviously doesn't look like that. Maybe that's just me though. I, I, I really don't know. But yeah, I think it looks so good. I think the composition of the page looks really nice too. Like. 
I don't know. Th this just kind of like reminds me of a tarot card. Am I going crazy? Wait, let me look up tarot cards real quick. I feel like this page kind of has the composition of like a tarot card. I don't know. It just, it looks nice to me. Also, if you want to see a photo of this finished piece, little self-promotion here. I actually finally posted on Instagram. Uh, this piece was my first ever post. If you follow me, then you've already seen it by now because I posted it on Wednesday, which is when I'm recording this audio. In fact, I just posted it like 10 minutes ago. So yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna leave my little rambles off here. Go follow my Instagram and Pinterest. Also, if you've made it this far in the video, like the video. I'm, I'm pretty proud of how this one turned out. Okay, so I'm done with the piece now, and y'all are also done listening to my my ramblings or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't have much more to say. I love how this piece turned out. Like actually, it's so different from what I normally do, but I think that's why I like it so much. It just oh, it just looks so nice. Like if you compare the art I made in my last video, like this, to to this. Would you even guess that the same artist did it? I don't even know. But yeah, uh, if you enjoyed this kind of video, please, please tell me. I'm thinking about making it like a monthly series or something like that. Cause I really enjoy just like asking y'all questions about art and then reading all y'all's answers. I think I already said this, but like, like so many of y'all answered and just gave me like such good responses. And I wanted to respond to like every single comment in this video, but of course I, <laughs> I wouldn't have been able to. But yeah, if you enjoyed the video, feel free to give it a like, comment, and maybe even subscribe if you would like. Also, one last thing, I know some of y'all are waiting for the 10k special. I know, I fell behind on the 10k special. It's definitely not going to be a 10k special anymore, because we are <coughs> we are way past 10k. But I promise I'll get that done before I go off to college, which is in like a month. That's the time frame I'm giving for myself. But yeah, like I said, like, comment, subscribe, because this is a YouTube video. No YouTube video is complete without it. And, uh, yeah, I don't have anything else to say, so I guess I'll go. Bye. <laughs>